Hey kindergarten, it's Mrs. Shivani again. How are you guys today? I hope that you're great. So we have been learning all about colonial Americans and we've learned so far so far how all the tradespeople in a town were important in their own ways. Everyone had their own special job to do, right? But there was one person who made it possible for everyone to do their jobs. What kind of job do you think could help everybody else do their job? Hmm, I'm thinking about the house builders and I know that they needed a lot of tools to build. So today we are going to read a story about the blacksmith. And by the end of this story, you will know exactly what a blacksmith made and what tools they used to make it. And this job is kind of dangerous. So get ready to read with me. Cozy up. Find a good space that you can listen for a lot of new facts and we'll get ready to read. Ready in three, two, one. Okay, the blacksmith. Blacksmiths were some of the most important tradespeople in town because they made all the tools people needed to do their jobs. So listen to all of the things that the blacksmiths made and try and guess what they're made out of. They made a lot of stuff. They made chisels for masons. Hey, we read about them yesterday. Hammers and nails for carpenters and cobblers. Remember, the cobbler was a shoemaker. They made household items like kettles, that's like a teapot, a cooking pot, a candle holder, and other utensils like forks and spoons. They also made horse shoes. That's that curved piece of metal that's nailed to a horse's foot in order to protect them. They made hinges on doors, knives, swords, locks, keys, and so much more. You'd be surprised at the number of things people use in everyday life that came from a blacksmith's shop. Wow, don't they sound really important? There's a blacksmith's, blacksmith's shop. That's kind of tricky for me to say. All right, let's look at our next photo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. To do his work, a blacksmith needed five basic things. He needed some metal to work with, something to heat the metal in, something to move the hot metal from one place to another, something to put it on, and something to hit it with. Blacksmiths in early America worked mostly with iron. Iron is a very strong metal, but when it is heated in fire, it becomes soft and pliable. That means it's easy to move. That means it can be shaped into whatever shape the blacksmith wants. Hey, the book thought ahead of me. <laughs> okay, let's look at our next photo. To heat the iron, a blacksmith used a special oven or a fireplace called a forge. Most forges were simply open fire pits, like the ones in the first picture, so that the blacksmith could work closely and easily with the metal he put in the fire. The most important thing was that the fire burned hot, so hot that it could melt metal. Let's look at our next photo. Once his forge was hot enough, the blacksmith would put a piece of iron in it. Because the forge was so hot, he had to use tongs. Tongs have two long metal arms connected by a hinge. By squeezing the two arms together, you could grab things without using your hands. You might have these in your kitchen or something similar. I have them in my kitchen and I use them when I'm making something in on the stove or something that's hot, just like the blacksmith so that, so that I don't get hurt. You can see the blacksmith using tongs right here in this picture. Tongs were an essential tool for the blacksmith. 
almost like a second pair of hands for him. That means that both were really necessary and important and he couldn't do his job without those tongs. So they were very important. The blacksmith would leave the iron in the forge until it was red hot, meaning that it actually got so hot that it turned bright red in the fire. Then he'd pull it out using his tongs again to keep from burning his hands. After quickly removing the red hot piece of iron from the fire, he placed it on the anvil. This is the anvil. The big block of metal on which the blacksmith shaped the iron. The blacksmith had to work quickly because the metal was only soft and pliable when it was red hot. Once the iron cooled, it would harden. Ooh, so he had to work very quickly. Ooh, here's an example. As long as the blacksmith kept the metal hot, he could shape it however he liked. He could make the metal longer or shorter, thicker or thinner. He could bend it and mold it into special shapes. In this picture, you can see how the blacksmith is shaping a horseshoe. When he was happy with the size and shape of whatever he was making, the blacksmith would let the iron cool off, sometimes by plunging it into a bucket of cold water, it would harden. Ooh. So what do you think would make the iron harden faster? Leaving it out in the air or plunging it into the water? I do something similar to this when I'm making hard boiled eggs. I put them into ice cold water and that stops them from cooking. So I'm thinking that plunging it into the cold water would help it to cool off. I bet you said the same thing. Because a blacksmith lifted hammers and heavy iron pieces all day long, he was usually one of the strongest, toughest men in town. A blacksmith probably had more than his share of scars and burns from the hot metal he handled every day. Yeah, I would think so because this is a dangerous job. Okay, let's see our next photo. Ooh, some more tools. Blacksmiths were often thought of as clever and resourceful people, meaning they were able to figure out how to fix things and make things work. If a person needed a special tool for a special job, Chances were the local blacksmith could figure it out and make whatever was needed. Is anyone wondering where the name blacksmith came from? I am. Let's see. Well, the word smith comes from the word smite, which is another word for hit. And iron is black, so a blacksmith is a person who smites or hits black metal for a living. Oh. Very interesting. There you go. Here's our last photo. Ooh, I bet some of you like this photo. I see some workers over here wearing hard hats. What do you see in this picture? I wonder what this is. Some sparks? Hmm, I see steps. I see some like plumbing or, or some sort of pipe. More like a pipe probably. Hmm, let's read about this picture. Today, machines do the work of blacksmiths, melting iron in large pots, oh, that must be what this is, and pouring the hot metal into molds or shapes. For example, there is a mold for horseshoes. The good thing about using a mold is that no one gets burned and all the horseshoes come out the same. But we still appreciate the handmade ironwork of a blacksmith from years ago. No town in early America was without a blacksmith. He was the essential tradesperson in every town. Yeah, that's so true because the cobbler couldn't make his shoes without the tools that he needed. And the blacksmith gave him those tools. And the construction worker couldn't build without a hammer. And the blacksmith would make the hammer. So without the blacksmith, none of the those other treats people that we learned about would be able to do their jobs. So we're really thankful for them. And I agree. It sounds like they were the most important part of colonial, of colonial America, at least the most important treats person, right? Okay, so I have three questions for you, and then I'll set you up for your journal prompt. Hmm, here's a detail. What kind of metal do the blacksmiths work with? Started with an I. 
maybe you use it when you want to get out wrinkly clothes. An iron. They used iron. Now, it wasn't like that same iron I'm talking about. It was the type of metal iron. Metal is hard. This is my second question. Metal is hard. How is a blacksmith able to bend iron into different shapes? Think, 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 think. It's so hard. You can't just bend it. Do you remember? He would heat it in a forge first until it was very hot and soft, and then it would be pliable. Remember that fancy word? That night you could bend it. I bet you got the answer right. Okay, last question. Whew. And this is a good one. Why was a blacksmith so important to the people in the rest of their town? Think, 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 why? I know, because he made tools for everyone else. That's why he was so important. He made everybody else's tools. I'm thankful for him. Okay, here is your journal prompt for the day. I would like you to draw and label a picture of one thing a blacksmith made. And remember, they made so many things. And then I want you to draw and label a picture of a tool that they had to use to make those things. So let's see, this is a modern picture, remember. Let's look at some of the other tools. Ooh, there's a tool they had to use. Ooh, remember the tongs? They had to use those. Ooh, I remember this they had to use. They used an open fire. So they had to use a wide variety of tools. So draw and label one thing they made and draw and label one tool that they used. It's going to be a good one. I can't wait to see your journal responses. I love seeing them. So keep up the great work you are doing. You are drawing some incredible pictures and I'm loving them. Tomorrow we'll be back with another story. It's a fictional one called The Little Gray Pony. And the pony does something with coal. So we'll read about that tomorrow. Bye guys.